let's go to my picks here. You know what? I'm going to flip this because anytime we start bracket discussion and anytime anyone starts bracket discussion, they start in the East. So you spend like 30 minutes on the East and then you're like, by the time you get to Midwest, it's let's go quick through it. I'm going to start in the Midwest to do our due diligence and reward people here. Uh, I have Purdue easily in the 116 game. I think they win that game by 45, no matter who it is. I have TCU beating Utah State. Uh, I am a little bit on fade the Mountain West outside of one team. More on that later. I have McNeese beating Gonzaga. Uh, Shahada Wells is a killer. I've been working on Field of 68 mid-major stuff with uh, Brian Burton throughout the year, and he is, to me, the mid-major player of the year. This is the mid-major team of the year. This is a really good basketball team, like a really, really good basketball team. Will Wade is a psychopath as well. Uh, I think this Gonzaga team could have some emotional issues after losing in the WCC, just like kind of self-doubts, especially like, I don't know, Nolan Hickman in that front court are not necessarily the most confident guys to me when they have to play good teams. McNeese with nothing to lose. I love the matchup. Uh, Samford beats Kansas in the first round. I think Hunter's hurt. This is my my read. I think Hunter is hurt. Bill Self came out and said before the Big 12 tournament straight up, Hunter wouldn't play if this was the NCAA tournament right now. McCuller would. He's just banged up. I think it's very ominous that Hunter wouldn't play and Bill Self's telling people that. If Hunter plays, even if he is 100%, give him the best case scenario here. I, I might botch the pronunciation of this, but a core, a core. Is that how you say it? Acre, acre, a core, core. That's how uh, it, that's a nightmare matchup for Hunter Dickinson offensively. Like I've talked about how Hunter can't guard in space at all. This is a big, who's going to stretch him out and do some stuff off the dribble with speed, with athleticism. He's not a plotting post. I think that would torch Hunter here. I really do. Uh, Samford plays a bunch of zone. It's going to require Kansas to make and take a bunch of threes. They don't like taking threes. They want to beat you up inside. I think the matchup favors Sanford if Kansas is at all injured, and my belief is that they are injured. So I have McNeese and Sanford, 12-13, both advancing in the Mark Few, Bill Self pod there. I have South Carolina beating Oregon. Uh, I'm not buying the Oregon turnaround because of the Pac-12 tournament run. The Pac-12 stinks, as you alluded to. Uh, South Carolina's physicality should get to them quickly. I have Creighton beating Akron. I do think that game could be closer than people think, just because – like a little bit of an early round scare, but I, I think Creighton gets through it. I like Texas over whoever wins between Virginia and Colorado state. It will be Virginia because Nico Medved's not beating Tony Bennett. He might score 32 points in that game. And then I have Tennessee beating St. Peter's uh, St. Peter's magic is not striking twice here. Tennessee's really, really good. Any questions, thoughts, comments on my first round. You picking bill self to lose first round is not sitting right with me to Samford. Yeah, I'm just, that, I don't know. Like, is Sanford that that type of team? I'm not picking Bill Self to lose in the first round. I'm picking Hunter Dickinson to lose in the first round. A banged yeah. up Hunter Dickinson that has to guard in space. You know it's his right shoulder that's hurt, right? <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I it, Seriously, though, there's something to the team that mailed it in and said we don't care in the conference tournament week. There's something to – that's not good vibes coming into – now, like you can't just flip a switch with Nick Timberlake and El Marco Jackson, who have never done this before, and be like, "All right, now it's go time." Like, they're going to rely on dudes that have not exactly had a great track record in any of these big spots. And like I said, matchup: a bunch of zone, force them to shoot threes, a perimeter big that Dickinson can't guard. Those are all the things I would look for of a team that could beat Kansas. Second round, Purdue beats TCU. I don't think it's relatively close. I feel like a lot of people are kind of floating over this, but uh, TCU is not great at guarding the uh, close to the basket, like two-point range defense. They are in the 200s. Let me put up the actual number. 207th in the country in two-point percentage defense. Yes, they're quick and athletic and can throw athletes on the perimeter, but uh, to me, you need more than athletes to get to produce guards this year with the way Braden Smith's been playing. I think they roll. I like McNeese over Samford. Um, McNeese has the shooters to just tear apart that zone, in my opinion. They would welcome that matchup. Creighton over South Carolina. Uh, interesting contrast of styles there, but I think South Carolina has gotten blown out against some of the better teams on their schedule when they just can't guard them, and I, I think Creighton's offense would be too much. I think Tennessee would destroy Texas. Rick Barnes' revenge game against his old school, by the way. Uh, 
I just think Tennessee is so much more physical than them. Like, the, remember that Texas game? We tried to get Texas to beat Kansas, and they were, like, down 24 immediately. Yeah. I think that's what happens. Those guards would get in Max Asmus's head, too. It's March. I know, but, like, Ziegler, Ziegler is a really good test for Asmus, and then, like, the Tennessee front court would disrupt the Sioux. Then what? Is Dylan Mitchell going to go crazy? Like, Dalton Connect would go crazy in that game. It's March. It's Dalton Connect in March. I'm excited to see it. Uh, I like Purdue over McNeese, although I will say this gave me real pause. Uh, Purdue's whole lose to lower seeded teams thing is real. And this McNeese team is better than all of the lower seeded teams Purdue has played and lost to in the last few years. Like th- this team's legit. This team's really good. Shahada Wells could absolutely have a huge game here. Um, in the end, though, I can't, I can't pick a team like McNeese to beat Zach Eady this year. I just can't do it. I, Zach Eady might need to get 40 in that game to get it done, and he might do it. I don't think McNeese could do anything about it. Purdue moves on. I have Tennessee beating Creighton. I really went back and forth on this one. I wanted to pick Creighton, but in the end. I reminded myself that Creighton has been really hard to trust throughout the season and that Creighton's struggles have come when they've played some of the better teams on their schedule, some of the more physical teams on their schedule. Tennessee is not going to get out physical. When I actually go through this draw for Tennessee, I love it. I don't think Tennessee plays a team in this entire region that I would consider extremely physical until they get to Purdue. And that's really just Zach Eady being extremely physical. So if they could solve that, I, I think it's very open for Tennessee to make a Final Four run here. But they got to get through Purdue. Mine is Purdue versus Tennessee in the Elite Eight. I have Purdue winning. Um, ultimately, I have to back Purdue getting over the hump. I just have to. And I think no matter who they were paired up here with, I would get to that conclusion. I, I don't think it's a good draw if they get Tennessee here. Like, I think Tennessee, it, seeing them again, second time after Maui, Tennessee will be up for the challenge. I think Tennessee's better than they were in Maui. But uh, you got to hope Lance Jones can do some things on Connect. You got to hope Edie dominates. You got to hope Braden Smith outplays Ziegler. I could say, I mean, like you said, eventually they got to get over the hump. And and it's it's a great chance to get over it this year with the way that lays out for them. I do like that Purdue lost in the Big Ten tournament for like their March hopes. I also want to say that. I know that's there's there's a history of teams that won the Big Ten tournament underperforming. I think it's good. That wasn't the big thing. Now we move on. Uh okay. Let's go up to the south. I have Houston rolling Longwood. No comment there. I have AM beating Nebraska. Uh it, you can dice up numbers, but like since March 1st, Texas AM's been one of the seven best teams in the country. Nebraska has also been very good going back further. Like since February 1st, they're like fringe top 10. Uh, ultimately, I hated what I saw from rank mass so much in that Illinois game. I can't get it out of my head. And a and is extremely physical. I just think they would get to mass. I really, I think they would get to Tomonaga. Like, are, are we positive Tomonaga can play in this game? Uh, not positive no <laughs> like he's i love him but like if he's not hitting shots me, he can't guard anybody on a and m and a and m has a bunch of guys who will just go right through him so uh, i think it's kind of a nightmare matchup for nebraska i like a and m i like james madison over wisconsin i think wisconsin is the team they were in february more than they were the team they were in minneapolis for the big 10 tournament uh, I also think James Madison is really good. To me, they are the second best mid-major in the country. Great offense. Terrence Edwards is a killer. Uh, great shooting. They, uh, what I love about James Madison is they almost always win the three-point battle. Like, they are 41st in the country in three-point percentage. They are second in the country in three-point percentage defense. Teams make 28% from three against them, and they limit attempts too. That's a great formula to beat teams. Especially, we're talking about a Wisconsin team. How did they win in the Big Ten tournament? They made a bunch of threes that they weren't making all season long. They just got nuclear for a week. I don't think you're going to hit seven threes even against James Madison. They're too good of a three-point defense. I like the Dukes. Uh, From there, sorry, I just lost my bracket. I like Duke over Vermont. Uh, I think Duke would be primed for an upset if they got a better mid-major opponent. I don't think Vermont has much that could take them down. Texas Tech over NC State. 
I, I'm not buying the DJ Burns stuff. He's fun. But I, I think McCaslin has this team playing like a top 20 team in the country and nobody's really talking about it. <laughs> Kentucky, Oakland. I went through seven, seven different versions of this bracket. Seven different ones. The first six had Oakland winning. And I think the matchup is there. I think it is. Oakland's zone defense is going to cause problems for this team. It's going to force Kentucky to have to make shots. Now, Kentucky's a great shooting team, but I think you're going to see turnovers from Kentucky. I think you're going to see Trey Townsend go off. I don't think I don't think anybody on Kentucky can guard him. I don't think Kentucky can play a true big in this game because Townsend will abuse them. I think if they go to Trey Mitchell, Townsend will abuse him. I think Kentucky's probably going to leave Jack Golke wide open five to seven times in this game. That's not smart. And I think Cal has a foot out the door. So I, I think it's right there. I can't pick Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard to lose to Jake Lampman, whatever Blake Lampman, whatever Ake Lampman this is. I can't do it. Uh, I also like there's nobody else in the bottom half of this region I want to pick to go far in this tournament. So, like, if I actually had Oakland winning this, I'm, like, debating, is it Texas Tech or Florida to make the Elite Eight? And that feels disgusting to me. So, by default, I had to put Kentucky through. Uh, I have Florida winning, but I think the hand locked in injury is going to be a real deal. Colorado or Boise could beat them. And then I have Marquette beating Western Kentucky. Your comments on my first round? Uh, so, honestly, I'm, I, I'm not mad at it. I flip-flopped a lot on this region when I did it, so I, I really don't have any qualms with any of your picks. I'm glad that you I'm glad you went with Kentucky. I will say that. If they were in a different region, I wouldn't have. I truly think Oakland can beat them, but it like I just can't. Like from a from a head and heart standpoint, I can't put like McCaslin, Texas Tech, or Shaka Marquette with an injured Kolick or Florida without their center. Like those are the three teams you would have to pick to the Elite Eight if you don't take Kentucky. And that feels incredibly off to me. Uh back to the top here. Houston, Texas AM. I think this would be a really fun game, but Houston's essentially just a better version of Texas A&M. Like A&M needs to win the boards. You're not winning the boards against Houston. So barring Wade Taylor just destroying Jamal Shedd, uh, I think Houston would roll A&M. Duke over James Madison is the pick here. Um, This game would remind me a lot of last year when Duke got Oral Roberts in the first round and everybody picked Oral Roberts and then Duke just rolled them. I think that would happen here. Uh, James Madison is not overly physical, even though they are very skilled. And I think Duke needs to play a team that would punk them. They haven't played a team that would punk them in this bracket yet. Uh, Kentucky, Texas Tech. I'll go Kentucky. I will say, if I wasn't picking Kentucky in the bottom half of this region, Texas Tech was going to be my pick to the Elite Eight. I think this team is playing way better than people realize. And in all likelihood, I absolutely could see a world where everyone's on Kentucky and Texas Tech just like controls the game from start to finish. They looked really good until they played the better team in the Big 12 tournament. Like when they've played undermanned opponents, they've been awesome for like a month and a half. And Pop Isaacs is a superstar. Like Pop Isaacs is doing like 20 points a night things. I also have a take that McCaslin might be special and we just haven't gotten to the point where people realize it. I like that take a lot. I like that. I'm flip flop. I might go back to Texas Tech in this region. I'm I'm rattled by it, but for now, Kentucky, uh, Marquette, Florida. I'm I'm defaulting to put Marquette in. If Handlockton was healthy, I would put Florida in here, but I'll uh, we'll put Marquette in. All right, uh, Sweet Sixteen, Houston over Duke. I said you need to be a team that's not soft to play Duke. Here's the least soft team in the country. I think Houston would beat Duke by 35, and uh, Tyrese Proctor would be in his feels. I I couldn't see that game playing out any other way. Yeah, uh, Kentucky, Marquette. Would be a really fun one. Uh, I'm going to go Kentucky once again. I'm worried about Kolick's injury. There's there's so many teams in this region. Even Houston has injury concerns right now. So, right. I like, the door's wide open for Kentucky, given all of that. And then, uh, yeah, Houston-Kentucky, we have the same Elite Eight matchup. I'm going Houston. Uh, I I think they're too physical. They're too good. I, like I, I just like that you gave Kentucky their shine. You should have got over the hump, though. Should have got but I know it's my toxic X Men. I know they're gonna lose early to someone, and I'm gonna regret this. Okay, but what what? Uh, but what are they doing? I th- I think you picking Kentucky to win the title is crazy. I'll, I call it what it is. I think it's crazy. Yeah, I'm kind of crazy. <laughs> you are kind of crazy. Uh, okay, I'm going reverse order here to the West region where I said on the bracket breakdown last night. I think this is the chaos region. 
bunch of upsets here. Let's get to them. North Carolina beats the 16 seed. Not worried about it. Michigan State beats Mississippi State. Uh, Tyson and AJ will physically get into Hubbard, and I don't see a world where Hubbard goes for like 30 in this game. Tolu Smith is the problem, but again, you have four bigs that have 20 fouls combined between them. I think Malik Hall matches up pretty well here. You're playing a team that's 12 spots worse than you on Ken Palm that lost four straight games to end the regular season. What do you want from me here? Like, I wish you were playing a better team. I really do. I have to. I love, I love the. I love that you're picking Michigan State. I'm gonna need you to stop using the Ken Palm ranking as a reason. We are not as high as we should be on Ken Palm. Yeah, but that that stuff does matter. Like when you talk about who's over and under seated, like it does matter. It does matter. And uh, your resume stinks. Your resume says you should be a five seed in the NIT. But the whole reason you're here is because the predictive metrics like Ken Palm say you're really good. It matters. So I, I don't know. I hope you're healthy. I think you're a better team. St. Mary's, I have rolling Grand Canyon. Uh, a lot of people like Grand Canyon, and I see why. Um, Tyon Grant Foster is really, really good. If they were in a different region, I think I'd be picking them to win their first game. The problem with the matchup against St. Mary's is that Grand Canyon is great on offensive rebounds. They like need to generate second chances to score. St. Mary's the second best team at preventing offensive rebounds in the sport. And then on the flip side, St. Mary's can get second chances galore in this game. Grand Canyon's really bad there, and St. Mary's is third in the country. So I think it uh, I think it is just good matchup for the Gales. Otherwise, th- that would scare me a little bit. Charleston over Alabama is my next pick. Uh, look, I'm just going to call this what it is. I would pick whoever was playing Alabama to beat Alabama. I have called them frauds all season long. With that said, I don't mind the matchup for Charleston. Charleston is 46th in the country at offensive rebounding. That's one of the things they do well. Alabama's horrible at preventing offensive boards. Charleston will get second chances. Ante Berzovich is their big. I think he's the best big in this game. I think he can feast on a Bama team that doesn't have a, a center that I trust at all. Uh, the only thing that scares me is both teams play fast. I wish Charleston like wanted to slow it down to disrupt things a little more. But shout out to uh, to Jim Root. Freeman Weave, the momentum metric at Haslametric says that Alabama has the worst momentum of any team in the country, even worse than Michigan and the bottom of the barrel teams in this sport. Uh, you have to fade them. You have to fade them. I hate that statistic, but okay. Pat Kelsey's also a psychopath. I have New Mexico over Clemson. Oh, sorry. Pat Kelsey's uh, basketball PJ Fleck. That's a Wow, even like look wise too. I've been sitting on that for a while, and I'm really happy to unveil that. And you don't become basketball PJ Fleck without having your PJ Fleck Cotton Bowl moment. That's true. Good, good call. Here we are. New Mexico over Clemson. I'm terrified that everybody's on this, but New Mexico is a better team. They're, they are a better team. They're the betting favorite. Uh, they're rolling right now. They just won the Mountain West Conference. Three headed guard duo. They have uh, legitimate guys inside. Nelly Junior Joseph, Toppin. I think this team can make a deep run. Uh, in the end here, this is Joe Girard and Chase Hunter against a backcourt full of dogs. Like, say what you want about Girard and Hunter. Those guys are not dogs when Clemson's bad it's because they're bad. And I think uh, New Mexico has three guards that I trust more than either of them right now. Baylor against Colgate. Ah! I don't trust any of the good teams in this region, man. I'm taking Colgate to win this game. Here's why. Uh, Colgate has the 11th best three-point percentage defense in the country. Baylor needs to make shots to win games. Baylor's last three games through the Big 12 tournament run, they've shot in the 20s from three. They're cold right now. I don't know what it is, but they I thought they were going to snap out in the final against Iowa State. They didn't snap out. They're missing shots right now. Uh, Colgate, 19th best offensive rebound defense in the country they don't give up second chances baylor thrives on that that's that's what baylor does they shoot threes and then they try and generate second chances with me and with jalen bridges colgate's going to take both of those away they're going to force ray j dennis to take care of the ball and just win a half court style game uh, colgate never fouls they're great at avoiding fouls baylor relies on getting to the line a ton matchup wise Everything that Baylor tries to do, well, Colgate does better on the defensive end. And I still believe that Braden Smith, their Braden Smith, is a really, really good guard. 
Colgate did get ran out of the gym by teams similar to Baylor earlier this season. They lost to Arizona. They lost to Illinois. I think they're a better team now from what I've been seeing. Braden Smith's game logs and just from the eye test in the conference tournament, he looks like the player I thought he was in the non-con, but he underwhelmed in those games. Ultimately, I just don't trust Ray J. Dennis and I don't trust Baylor. Yeah, Baylor by 20. I have, that's what Stucky laughed at me on the action and everything, too. He's like, come on. I'm like, it's me fading Baylor, man. I just don't see it with this team. I'm going Colgate. Uh, I have Nevada over Dayton. You were right. I do like Nevada. I think Blackshear. Um, Blackshear is the best player in this game. And Deron Holmes is in this game. Blackshear is the best player in this game. Uh, in all seriousness, Dayton has nobody who can guard Blackshear. So I, I you won't even look at me right now. But seriously, who's who's guarding Blackshear from Dayton in this game? The shooter, Brea? I don't know. I just don't like that Deron Holmes is the second best player in this game thing. That's Mm-mm. Talk to me when there's four minutes left and Anthony Grant's drawn up ISOs for Deron Holmes and he's yeah. dribbling off his foot and Blackshear's killing in the mid range. Yeah, I'm. I just yeah. All right, I'm. I'm on your rock record. All right, uh, I have a Dayton number for you. Dayton has one win against the field this season. You know who it was? Uh, one win against. No, I don't know who it was. Oakland. Why is this Dayton team even in the field, by the way? Can anyone explain this to me? Why is this team? Because they didn't win the A-10, which was supposed to be a one-bid league. They didn't win it. And then they didn't win the A-10 tournament, which, was, again, was supposed to be a one-bid league. They lose it. So uh, why? We, we we give them a seven seed? They have one win against the field. They have, they have one win all season against the field. It's Oakland. It's a 14 seed. Uh, Nevada has six wins against this field. Dayton has one. That's insane to me. That is actually an insane number. Nevada's going to roll. Uh, Arizona beats Long Beach State with ease, no question. Any additional comments on my first round? No, this is a chaos region. You went chaosy, so. Yeah, I have Charleston, New Mexico, Colgate, and Nevada all as double-digit seeds winning their first game in this region. Yeah. Wide open. Wide yeah. open. So next round, but go on. Wide open. Second round, I have Carolina beating Michigan State because I'm doing this with my head and my heart, unlike you, and you just did it with your heart. Uh, you know North Carolina is the better team than Michigan State, and you know they pose matchup problems. Yep. I have uh, St. Mary's beating Charleston. I don't think Charleston's particularly good. I just think they drew the ultimate frauds in Alabama in the first round. I do think St. Mary's is legitimately good. They have the best guard in this game with Mahaney. They're the most physical front court that Charleston will have seen this season. I have New Mexico beating Colgate. I would have New Mexico beating Baylor for the record as well. Um, again, I think this is New Mexico. Like, New Mexico is the best backcourt in this region. And there's a lot of good run-and-gun up-tempo teams. Uh, I have Arizona beating Nevada. That game could get dicey. I just want to say that. Again, you don't want to get in the in the boo zone with Blackshear. And he's capable of boo zoning a little bit. Yes. Okay. North Carolina loses to St. Mary's. In my Sweet 16, you and I both have St. Mary's all the way to the Elite Eight. I think that St. Mary's is playing better than North Carolina right now. Uh, I do have some St. Mary's numbers since February 1st. They're the eighth best team in the country. They're just two spots below Arizona. Like, they've, they're have they right there. They've been better than North Carolina since February 1st. Uh, I love the Gales. I have New Mexico beating Arizona. I will say this. I think uh, this region breaks really well for Arizona. Like, if you want to believe in Arizona, this is a good region for it because they play a bunch of up-tempo teams in theory. Like, Baylor and New Mexico are both teams that would just try and out Arizona, Arizona. My Mm -hmm. ultimate reason is that I do not trust Caleb Love to be good for three straight games. And if he's been good for the first two, he's going to have a stinker in the third. And New Mexico, if Jalen House is off, then okay, give it to Mashburn. If Mashburn's off, okay, give it to Dent. They have multiple dudes. They're not one-dimensional. And I think uh, even if it was an up-tempo running on game, New Mexico's guards as a whole are better than Caleb Love. Tournament Love has done it for three straight games, though. With a better team than he has right now. Brady Manicate walking through that door. Shaw Johnson is. I have St. Mary's against New Mexico in the Elite Eight. Shout out the West Coast here. Uh, But this actually feels correct to me. Like, when you step back and look at the bracket at large, it's like there's elite teams here, here, and here. And then there's – we don't know who's good anywhere else. But the West Coast is kind of fun to watch. This this matches with my feel of the whole season. I have St. Mary's beating New Mexico uh, relatively easily. I do. I could see New Mexico there, but 
I think St. Mary's has been playing at such a high level other than the one game against Gonzaga at the end of the season. Like, take this team seriously, man. They almost beat UConn last year. They returned everybody. Mahaney's a killer. Defense is legit. Randy Bennett's a good coach. The fact that they won both titles against Gonzaga in one year should be a very ominous sign that this could be the year for St. Mary's. Wow. St. Mary's in the Final Four. St. Mary's in the Final Four, my friend. I'm not that mad at it. You have them close. You have them the Elite Eight. Yeah, so I'm not mad at it. Go Gales. All right, uh, and then top, I'll be quick on this one. See what I did? That was smart there. I uh, On the East, I have UConn beating Stetson, no question. I have Northwestern beating FAU. That is my pick with my heart. It's the only one I picked with my heart in the entire first round. Uh, bottom line, I'm not taking Budarius to lose to a team that I think has no heart. Call it what it is. I, I think this Florida Atlantic team has checked out on the whole season already and has no heart. They know their coach is leaving. They don't know where they're going next year. This is Budarius' legacy on the line. And he had a tweet last night that was something like, LMAO already been counted out or something like that. I love it. Boo to the second round. I have San Diego State beating UAB. Uh, I You were all over UAB here. That's the one that I really don't understand from your first round. I don't think they're good at all. Uh I'm not in on gains, and I think San Diego State has championship DNA. I really do. I don't think they're good either, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Uh, Auburn, Yale. I'm going Yale. Uh, I did. This kind of solidifies my prediction that both Alabama and Auburn would lose in the first round on the bull prediction show with Riley earlier this year. But the matchup favors Yale. It really does. Yale never turns the ball over. They're 18th in the country in uh, avoiding turnovers. Yale is elite at preventing offensive rebounds, 13th best defensive rebounding team in the country. Yale slows the game down super slow. Auburn plays fast. Auburn wants to run and jump. They're not going to be able to run and jump. Auburn wants to offensive rebound, second chances. They're not going to be able to do that. I think they're going to get frustrated here. Very similar to the Princeton game against Arizona last year. Where, like, if Princeton hits some shots early and all of a sudden it's a really slow walk it up game, you saw Arizona get frustrated and more frustrated. I can see the Auburn guards just like freaking out and looking around. Katie Johnson tries to like hero ball his way off the bench here. Um, and Danny Wolf is like a dude. Like, he, Danny Wolf could be Kansas's starting big next year if Hunter Dickinson leaves. Uh, I think he's going to show up for the Broom matchup. Yeah. I- I have uh, BYU rolling Duquesne. Duquesne might be the most overseeded team in this tournament as an 11 seed. It's absurd. I have Illinois beating Moorhead, but uh, again, the Action Network guys are like really trying to talk me into Moorhead here. I did my best to avoid it. Ultimately, I don't think you're beating Illinois if you play a bunch of switchable guys. Like you're you're not going to out Illinois, Illinois. That said, Minix and Lathan are a, a duo to be reckoned with. Shannon and Hawkins need to show up and win those matchups and take them personally. I have Drake beating Washington State. I love Tucker DeVries in that one. Fade the Pac-12, I'm with you. I have Iowa State rolling South Dakota State. Your thoughts on my first round? I still hate the Yale pick, to be honest with you. I love it. I love it. I couldn't love it more. It's my favorite upset in the first round. All right. keep Keep rocking. I have UConn beating Northwestern, but it's close. I, it's close. I think Boo gets him to the Boo zone, and that alone is a win. If I get to tweet, welcome to the Boo zone, Danny Hurley, that <laughs> is all. That Boo's career is over. He accomplished what he needed to. Uh, but championship DNA perseveres for the Huskies. I have San Diego State beating Yale. Strongly considered Yale here. Uh it's kind of a hedge in case Auburn beats Yale, I'll be honest with you. I think San Diego State is not losing in the first round, and I'm confident they'll be there. Of Illinois beating BYU, um, yeah, if they if they get to BYU, I can't see them losing this game. I could see Illinois losing to Moorhead more than I could see them losing to BYU, as strange as that sounds. And then uh, I have Iowa State beating Drake. I do think Tucker could go off and make that interesting, but – He'd have to do it single-handedly, and that's tough to do against the Iowa State defense. I have UConn beating San Diego State maybe by 45, maybe like a run it up. Danny Hurley thinks he still needs to like improve his net rank in that one. I have <laughs> Iowa State beating Illinois. It hurts me to say it, but I think Illinois is going to be happy they got to the Sweet 16. Hang the banner. Iowa State, I think, is the better team. I really do, and I. this is a little bit of the, where the bad draw comes in. Iowa State could have easily been the fourth one seed. They just destroyed Houston, and ultimately, they're not going to let Illinois play their game. The same way Purdue forced them to play slow, and it got to them, that's what Iowa State would do for 40 minutes. It would wear them down. 
Um, it hurts. It hurts me to say that card. But it's, it's facts, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's a scary match. They need Iowa State to lose, in my opinion, in order to really feel good about a deeper run. And then UConn-Iowa State, kind of chalky. Again, second region, I have one versus two. But uh, I got UConn. I think that game could be close, though. I think that could be really, really close. But ultimately, you got to pick UConn, man. It hurts. Got you got to pick UConn. My final four is three one seeds, UConn, Houston, Purdue, and St. Mary's. I hate doing that, but I said this on the action show. I'm just going to say it again. I went through the numbers the last 10 years. Guess how many years in the last nine seasons Ken Palm has finished with two teams with an efficiency margin of 30 or higher? Like the actual number of adjusted efficiency margin that is the entire sorting method for Ken Palm rankings. 30 or higher is a really high number. There are two teams. Houston and uh, UConn that are above 30. Purdue's right at the cut line at 29. How many years in nine years have there been multiple teams at 30 or higher? Two times. Two times is the exact number. Do you have any guesses on what two years those years were? Uh, it, Well, this, this – wait, you said it's not this year, right? Or it is this it, year? This is the third in nine third, seasons. Oh, this is the third. Okay, yeah. I, I know one's got to be that year with, like, the Gonzaga-Baylor. Year. Gonzaga and Baylor in 2021 then, was the last one. Two they, super elite teams. Oh, that was the last? Oh, I was going to say the other one was like that Duke-Wisconsin year. That's a little far back. The, the other one, so there's two years. The first one is Gonzaga-Baylor in 2021, which again, the story of that year was there's two elite teams. Gonzaga, Baylor, best two teams. And they, they cakewalked to a matchup with each other in the national championship game. It was great. And then uh, the other one was, let me find the correct year here. 2019, I believe. Yeah, the Virginia, Texas Tech, Michigan State year. There were five teams somehow at 30 and above. Virginia, Gonzaga, Michigan State, Duke, and Texas Tech. A bunch of elite teams that year. Three of the five made the Final Four. So if you're at that 30 number, you're elite. Like you're, you are elite compared to most years. For comparison's sake, last season there wasn't a team that finished 30. UConn wasn't 30. Why did we have a chaotic, weird year? because there was no team at 30 or above. This year, we have two, and if Purdue wins their first two games, they probably get up to 30. In my opinion, we have three elite teams that are so much further ahead of the pack. We need to treat it that way. They're all in separate regions. Uh, UConn, Houston, Purdue all make it. And then the other one's chaos. It's wide open in the sport outside of that, and that's why I like St. Mary's. I have UConn rolling St. Mary's. Don't think that would be close. I have Purdue beating Houston. I think ultimately... Houston as physical as they are, are giving up way too much size to Zach Eady. Like, I just, I don't think they have an answer for that. And Braden Smith, I trust him as a dog mentally to deal with the physicality and figure it out. Lance Jones would matter in that game. Big time. Like, yeah. big, that would be a, this is why we brought Lance Jones here game against Houston. And uh, in a UConn-Purdue matchup, which is all we could ask for, this would be the Baylor-Gonzaga outcome. Everybody wants to say UConn's the better team. Everybody wanted to tell me Gonzaga was the better team than Baylor. That wasn't the case. I think Purdue is the best team in the country, and I think Purdue beats UConn for the national championship. Wow, they did it. They got over the hump. Braden Smith, national champion. All right, that was a really long exercise, long episode, but it was fun. Hopefully people enjoyed listening to that.